gravitational potential energy on Earth. When an object weighing 10 newtons is lifted onto a 2 meter high shelf, the work done is calculated using the equation W work in joules equals mgh, where m is mass of the object in kilograms, g is acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared, and h is the vertical distance through which the object is moved, and that is equal to F subscript G, the force due to gravity on the object or the weight of the object, multiplied by D, the vertical distance through which the object is moved in meters. In this case, the object, the box, weighs 10 newtons and it's lifted 2 meters, so that the work done to lift the box onto a 2 meter high shelf is 20 joules. The increase in gravitational potential energy of the box can be calculated using the equation delta E subscript P, where E subscript P is gravitational potential energy, so changing gravitational potential energy, equals mgh, where m is the mass of the box in kilograms, g is acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared, and h is the vertical distance through which the box is moved, equals F subscript G, the force due to gravity in newtons or the weight of the box, multiplied by D, the vertical distance through which the box is lifted in meters, equals 10 newtons by 10 meters equals 20 joules. The change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done on the box. So we can write delta E subscript P, change in gravitational potential energy, equals delta W, the work done on the box. If we were to push the box off a 2 meter high shelf, the work done and the change in gravitational potential energy would have the same numerical value, the same absolute value, but would have the opposite sign. The change in gravitational potential energy would still be equal to the work done on the box, but in this case would be equal to minus 20 joules. Gravitational potential energy on Earth is usually defined in reference to the surface of the Earth meaning that an object resting on the surface of the Earth is defined as having zero height and zero gravitational potential energy. If we were to push the box into a hole rather than lifting it onto a shelf, the gravitational potential energy of the box relative to the surface of the Earth would become negative, and negative work, of course, because it's falling, would also be done on the box. Relative to the center of the Earth, an object resting on the surface of the Earth still has gravitational potential energy. In order to be useful outside the near-Earth environment, we need a more general definition of gravitational potential energy than defining it relative to the surface of the Earth. Gravitational potential energy in space. So let's consider gravitational potential energy in more general terms in space and in order to do this, we're going to take the example of a little spaceship, which will be our test mass. In terms of space, gravitational potential energy is, by convention, defined as being relative to a point outside of the gravitational field of a mass, meaning that gravitational potential energy at an infinite distance from a mass is defined as being zero. In the diagram, the mass relative to which gravitational potential energy is being discussed is represented by an orange circle, which is supposed to show a star. And the mass whose gravitational potential energy we are considering is a little spaceship. When the center of mass of the little spaceship is at an infinite distance from the center of mass of the star, its gravitational potential energy is zero by definition. When the center of mass of our little spaceship is at any distance less than infinity from the center of mass of the star, the gravitational potential energy is less than zero. So just as the gravitational potential energy of a box sitting on the surface of the Earth, if we define gravitational potential energy relative to the surface of the Earth, is equal to zero, and if we push the box into a hole, the gravitational potential energy is going to be less than zero, in space, defining gravitational potential energy as being zero at infinity means that for any distance less than infinity, the gravitational potential energy is going to be less than zero. Gravitational potential energy becomes more negative, decreases, as the distance to the center of mass 
decreases. So as the distance between the centre of mass of the star and the centre of mass of the little spaceship decreases, the gravitational potential energy also decreases or becomes more negative. This is similar to the situation of the box on Earth, because as you lift the box higher, the gravitational potential energy increases, and as you lower the box towards the surface of the Earth, the gravitational potential energy decreases. The gravitational potential energy of the little spaceship at a distance r from the centre of mass of the Sun, as shown in the diagram, is going to be equal to the work done to move our little spaceship from infinity into a distance r. In the example of the box falling from a shelf, the change in gravitational potential energy was equal to the work done, which is equal to the final gravitational potential energy of the box minus the initial gravitational potential energy of the box. For our little spaceship, the gravitational potential energy at R is equal to the work done on our little spaceship to move it from an infinite distance from the centre of mass of the star to a distance R from the centre of mass of the star. So that the gravitational potential energy at R is equal to the final gravitational potential energy minus the initial gravitational potential energy. This will of course be equal to minus F subscript GR, the force due to gravity acting on the little spaceship at a distance R from the centre of mass of the star, multiplied by R, the distance between the centre of mass of the little spaceship and the centre of mass of the star. The force due to gravity acting on the little spaceship is negative as it is directed in towards the centre of mass of the star. So for this reason, the gravitational potential energy is negative and also because the work done to move the little spaceship from infinity into R is negative. In more general terms, the gravitational potential energy of an object within the gravitational field of a mass is going to be equal to minus F subscript G the force due to gravity on the object due to the gravitational field of the mass multiplied by r, the distance between the centre of mass of the object and the centre of mass of the mass. Gravitational potential energy formula. When thinking in terms of space, the value of acceleration due to gravity is not constant, but decreases with the square of the distance from the centre of mass of an object. Acceleration due to gravity is also directly proportional to the mass of the object exerting the gravitational force. Combining these and introducing a constant of proportionality, capital G, we get the equation G, acceleration due to gravity, equals capital G, the universal gravitational constant, multiplied by capital M, the mass of the object exerting the gravitational force in kilograms, over r squared, where r is the distance from the centre of mass, in metres. The force due to gravity or weight of an object can be calculated using the equation F subscript g equals mg, where F subscript g is the force due to gravity or weight of an object in newtons, m is the mass in kilograms, and g is the value of acceleration due to gravity in metres per second squared. Combining these two equations, the equation for force due to gravity and the equation for acceleration due to gravity, we get the equation F subscript G, force due to gravity in newtons, equals capital G, the universal gravitational constant, multiplied by little m, big M, on R squared, where little m and big M are the masses of the two objects in kilograms, and R is the distance between the centres of mass of the two objects in metres. The symbols little m and big M are usually used where there is a large difference in the mass of the two objects, such as a little spaceship and a star. If we replace these with the symbols M1 and M2, we get a more general form of the equation, which can be used to calculate the gravitational force between any two objects. This equation is known as Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, which states that every particle of matter in the universe attracts every other particle of matter in the universe with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. 
substituting from Newton's law of universal gravitation into the formula for gravitational potential energy which we derived before, we get the equation E subscript P gravitational potential energy equals minus capital G universal gravitational constant M1 M2 the product of the masses in kilograms over R squared where R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects in meters multiplied by R the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects in meters. This simplifies to E subscript P gravitational potential energy equals minus capital G M1 M2 on R where E subscript P is gravitational potential energy in joules M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects in kilograms capital G is a universal gravitational constant and R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects in meters. So gravitational potential energy is defined as being equal to the work done to move an object from outside the gravitational field of a mass to some point within the gravitational field of a mass. The work done is negative as it involves a decrease in potential energy. Gravitational potential energy graph. Gravitational potential energy plots as an inverse square graph. And this is because the force due to gravity decreases with the inverse square of the distance from the center of mass. This graph is a plot of gravitational potential energy relative to the Earth, with the surface of the Earth represented by the dotted line R subscript D for radius of the Earth. The distance from the center of the Earth is on the horizontal axis labeled little r, and gravitational potential energy is on the vertical axis labeled E subscript pot. Near the Earth's surface, the variation in the Earth's gravitational field is quite small. Therefore, we can use the formula E subscript P gravitational potential energy equals mgh mass in kilograms multiplied by g acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared multiplied by h the vertical distance through which the object is moved is equal to F subscript G, the force due to gravity on the object or the weight of the object in newtons, multiplied by D, the vertical distance through which the object is moved. So near the Earth's surface, F subscript G multiplied by D is a good approximation of gravitational potential energy. As the object gets further away from the surface of the Earth, the variation in the value of acceleration due to gravity from that operating at the surface of the Earth becomes more significant. In this case, we have to use the formula E subscript P, gravitational potential energy, equals minus capital G, universal gravitational constant, multiplied by M1, M2, product of the masses in kilograms, over R, the distance between the center of mass of the two objects in meters. Summary. Gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done to move an object from outside the gravitational field of a mass to some point within the gravitational field of a mass. The work done is negative as it involves a decrease in potential energy. Mathematically, E subscript P, gravitational potential energy, equals minus capital G, M1, M2 on R, where M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects in kilograms, capital G is the universal gravitational constant, and R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects in meters. Graphically, gravitational potential energy plots as an inverse square graph as a result of the force due to gravity decreasing with the inverse square of the distance from the center of mass of the object. Thank you for watching.